Today we have another fun three blind mice build. Don't go away. Hello everyone and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today Lee has thrown down the gauntlet with the Hot Wheels Hudson Hornet. The concept is to take this very cool casting and make your own livery for it. It should be a lot of fun, so let's get building. So Lee is really the idea man of the three blind mice, and he had some of these Hot Wheel Hudson castings and thought it could be fun to do a build where we all make our own race team from these very cool cars. So that's where we find ourselves today, making the Fat Guy Productions Hudson race car. It should be a ton of fun. So, you know the drill. Get it? Drill? <laughs> I crack myself up. Uh, anyhow, enough jocularity. It's time for some serious tie cast building here. The casting has two posts, which I will drill out. And the car has a plastic base, which I hate, but I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to move forward. The posts are drilled and with the help of my tiny screwdriver, I can now pry the base off the body. The casting has the standard complement of parts, base, body, interior, and glass. And now I can drill out the post for screws. I'll use a bit of oil and some caution as I drill. Then, once the holes are drilled out, I'll tap them using the great tap handle from Bright Vision. And then I'll run screws into the post just to make sure I'm good to go and to keep the holes clear of gunk and debris. And now for an epic goo drop. Shit. Let me say epic fail. The drop into the warm liquid goo was a total bust. My sincerest apologies for this disappointing drop. Moving on. Anyhow, while the casting basks in the warm liquid goo, I can shop for appropriate wheels for my race car as the ones that came with this casting totally suck. I found a pair of wheels I like, I checked their size, and they seem good, so now with a pair of sprue cutters, I'll nip away one of the tabs that holds the axles in and pop out the old sucky wheels. Now I can slide the new wheels in just to get a look and see how it's gonna work, and I like what I see, so the base can now sit to the side. It's been a while and the citrus strip has had time to do its thing, so I can pluck the casting from the goo, and I can clearly see the paint is just sloughing off, so I'll take the body, run to the sink, and give it a good washing. The car is now clean, dry, and paint free. I'll give it a quick pass with my beloved brass bristle brush, and then I can head for the paint booth. The colors for my logo are orange and black, and as such, they're too obvious for my paint job. I'm going to go with white, as I think my logos and colors will really pop against nice gloss white paint job. I'm going to start this paint job with a coat of Tamiya Fine Primer, then I'm going to set it aside to dry. With the primer dry, I can now paint the body with Tamiya X2 gloss white paint. I need to get a nice smooth finish here so the decals will lay down. So I thin the paint with leveling thinner and some X20 and I'll lay it down in my normal manner, multi coats, tack coat, medium coats, 
wet coats the way I always do. I'm really happy with the paint, so I'll set the body aside for a nice long dry and I can turn my attention to decals. I took a pencil in hand and I sketched out the designs I had in mind. And once I was happy, I opened up Adobe Illustrator on the computer and I started to make my logos. I start by getting the artwork right. Afterwards, I measure the car and scale the graphics. Once everything is looking great, I send the job to my HP laser printer and print out my decals. With the decals in hand, I give them a very close inspection to make sure that I'm happy and also check the sizes of everything. If it's all good, I can move forward. I cut the decals out as close to the art as possible. This paper is clear backed, but it's still a good habit to cut as close to the art as you can. With all the decals I need cut out, I can now do one little test fit to make sure everything is going to fit right and looks good and then I can go ahead and start laying the decals down. The decals are dipped into the water and slid off their backing onto the casting. This car has a lot of design features so it's vital here to use setting solution. Once everything's on, I can then leave the car to dry completely. Once the decals are totally and completely dry, I can head back to the paint booth for my beloved urethane clear coat from Bright Vision. The car already looks great, but the clear will really take this to an entirely different level. I mix the clear with its hardener and I'm going to apply it like I do the paint, starting with a tack coat, then some medium coats, and then finally some nice wet coats which will give me a glassy smooth finish. After applying the clear, I leave the car to dry for at least 24 hours. As an extra precaution, I'll put the casting on my heating lamp for about 30 minutes or so before I handle it just to make sure it's completely cured. I can now slap this sucker back together. In goes the glass, then the interior, and then I screw the entire thing together. I plan to use my small 172 screws and they proved too small. Size does matter. Anyhow, uh, sorry, I cracked myself up. Anyhow, I end up having to add washers to the screws to make sure there is enough bite here. Now with everything locked up, I can add a few details and wrap this one up. I'm going to start by using some Tamiya black panel liner for the front and rear bumpers, but I'm going to do something completely different for the body. I find the black liner is too stark for light or white cars, so I turn to Tamiya's gray panel liner to highlight the doors and other seams. This is far more subtle, it works great, and it makes the car look real without being over the top. Mm -hmm. 
So I just do a little more detailing and I can call this one done and ready for the racetrack. I had a lot of fun with this and I hope you love it. Well, there you have it, my three blind mice Hudson build in Fat Guy livery. I think it came out great. I hope you love this build, and if you do, please give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss one of my diecast custom builds. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to talk with you guys. Well, that's it for this build. Always remember, speed is irrelevant if you're going in the wrong direction. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.